Our gospel lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This ends the Gospel reading for this morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Now it has become tradition for Epplers UCC to have the Sunday after Easter to be Holy Humor Sunday. It is the day when we come together to worship, tell jokes, and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the joke that was played on the devil when Jesus rose from the dead. I'm going to begin my sermon with one joke here to kind of get us started. So this guy dies and goes to heaven. When he gets there, St. Peter is standing at the gate and he says, if you can answer these three questions, I will let you into heaven. St. Peter asks the first question. How many seconds are in a year? And the guy says, 12. 12, says St. Peter. How did you get that? The man replied, January 2nd, February 2nd, and so on. Peter thinks it over and says, well, that is not exactly what I meant, but it is techni technically correct. So I will give you credit. Then St. Peter asks a second question. How many days of the week have a T? In them. And the guy answers two. St. Peter asks how he got that answer, and the man explains today and tomorrow. St. Peter again admits that that's not what he had in mind, but he'll accept that. Peter then asks the third question What is God's first name? The man replies, I learned this one in church during a hymn. God's name is Andy. Andy walks with me, Andy talks with me, Andy tells me I am his own. St. Peter shakes his head and lets the man answer, enter. So although this Holy Humor Sunday has become sort of tradition, uh, we recognize that this year is a little bit different. It has become difficult for some of us to find humor in our daily lives when we are living in fear. But I want us to embrace the humor and also hear this message about a man named Doubting Thomas. 
a man synonymous with people who are afraid and doubtful about things in their lives. The first part of our gospel lesson brings us to the first time that Jesus came to see the disciples after he was raised from death and his body had disappeared from the tomb. We most likely find the disciples still in the upper room where they had the Last Supper all hiding out because they were afraid that the authorities were going to be coming after them too. As the disciples sat there, Jesus was suddenly with them. The door was locked. The blinds were shut. We can almost imagine the disciples hiding out all huddled in a corner of the room away from the doors and windows. And then Jesus is just there. This would probably be the first joke of the story. The disciples had seen Jesus do some miraculous things like walking on water and healing people, but this was not only after his body had disappeared after it was placed into a closed tomb, but it was also the first time that Jesus had walked through closed doors and walls. This would have made even the most faithful people question how Jesus was able to do this, and this was the first time that the disciples have seen Jesus after he raised from the dead. What wasn't a joke was how Jesus greeted the disciples when he entered the room. He told them, peace be with you. This phrase means more than just, may you be saved from trouble. It means, may God give you every good thing. I would like to say to you this morning, peace be with you. And I mean that phrase with every fiber of my being and every hair on my head. I pray that in these times of uncertainty, that we will find the spirit present with us. Even in our fear or our concern for ourselves and our neighbors, friends and family. May we all know and trust that God will give us every good thing and continue to watch over us and protect us and share in the love that we have for each other. Well, just like those disciples were living in fear, they were shown the trust that what Jesus was telling them over and over again, that he will return. They can now see what has come out of their belief and trust in following him. When Jesus first appears to the disciples, he continues with his teaching for them and for us. Jesus says, receives the Holy Spirit. If you remit the sins of any, they are remitted. And if you retain them, they are retained. There's nothing to joke about either. The disciples are are given that forgiving power that God has given to Jesus. This shows that God needs the church and needs us to continue to be the church. We need to be forgiving, loving, and recognize that we are blessed by the Holy Spirit. Now, the disciples generally believed what had happened because they saw Jesus standing before them. Now we have come to the part of this story where Thomas arrives back with the disciples as they're all together about a week after Jesus' first appearance. This is the part of the story where Thomas is doubtful. He's the world's most well-known pessimist. His glass is half empty. There can never be any doubt, though, that Thomas loved Jesus. He loved him enough to be willing to go to Jerusalem and to die with him, as it says back in chapter 11 of John. Thomas is even more bold back in those chapters than the other disciples because they are hesitant to follow. Yet here, we find Thomas being the one that is doubtful. What Thomas expected to happen did happen. But it seems that Thomas was so brokenhearted that he felt that he needed to be alone in his grief. This is an explanation for why Thomas wasn't with the rest of the disciples the first time that Jesus returned to that locked upper room. This hiding away by himself by Thomas is one mistake that we can see that Thomas made. Not only was Thomas not present to see Jesus the first time, but he withdrew from the Christian fellowship. 
He sought loneliness rather than togetherness. And we can learn from Thomas in some ways that we, we cannot be together. That is against the rules at the moment, but we are together in other ways. We're together in spirit. We are together in the love of Christ. We are together in the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. We are all in this together. Now, Thomas was together in spirit with his fellow disciples as well, but Thomas did leave those disciples. But they still made sure that he understood what happened when he returned. There was a constant connection of the disciples together, and there was a connection that Jesus had with his disciples as well, including Thomas. Even though Thomas doubted what had happened, Jesus still had a lesson for him. You see, Jesus still loved Thomas, and Thomas still loved Jesus. Now, there are times when we make mistakes and when we have our doubts in our lives as well. But we know that even if we have doubts, Christ is present with us and our church family and fellow human beings are here to support us. You know, we all have our own doubts at times. We have doubts as big as Thomas when we may doubt our faith. But we may also have doubts about the little things that happen in life, and we need to know that that is okay. We may have small doubts that get us nervous, or we perceive things that aren't really a problem, but we think they are. We might doubt that we have made the wrong supper because it turns out that it is something the kids will just not eat. You may get upset because you doubt that you have said the right things during a disagreement that you have said with a spouse or a coworker. You may even have a doubt about something like a haircut and think that it isn't right or that you have made the wrong choice about what style to go with. We also have bigger doubts that can burden us for a longer period of time. When have you ever doubted that you didn't take the right job or that you took the first opportunity that came along and then second guess that maybe you could have done better at a different career or position. We have bigger doubts about the cars that we may have bought or the house that we just purchased. These big doubts can burden us for a long period of time and we may struggle over time and come back to these things, but no matter what our doubts, we know that God is guiding us through everything and is present with us when we are concerned about what is happening. We can also have a crisis of faith or a time of doubt in our faith. This is partly what Thomas is dealing with. Thomas was struggling with what he knew to be true. He knew that Christ died and he even believed that he was raised from death, but he just needed to see it. He just needed to see what it was that was the change that happened to Christ. You may have had a change in your life that you have doubted. It may have been right in front of you the entire time, but we sometimes have trouble in our lives and we do have doubts. Thomas was a doubting person. He was a man who believed in God. He believed in the resurrection of Jesus. He had his faith, but he had questions. You may have questions about what in the world has been happening to my hair throughout this sermon. You may have even gone backwards in the video just to check to see exactly what was happening. Well, I wanted to add a little bit of humor to our worship time together this morning. I wanted to make sure that as we try to celebrate this Holy Humor Sunday, that we can laugh together and celebrate again the resurrected Christ. As we go through our lives and our doubts and the fears that we may be living with about the pandemic in general or even something specific that has nothing to do with this situation, know that Christ has risen and our faith and even our doubts will continue to allow us to be faithful 
loving people. My prayer this morning is that the Spirit will continue to fill you with laughter and joy. And may you always know the presence of the loving God. Amen. I'd like to finish with one more uh, joke, if you will, something to lighten our time together. And I hope that you can take some time to laugh this week, and that you can take some time to be with God and be joyful, and that we will be together in worship soon, and that hopefully we will be together uh, with our families. So there's a story about a little girl who opened her big family Bible. She began turning through the yellowed pages. Something fell out of the book of Genesis. The little girl picked it up to have a closer look. It was an old leaf that had been carefully pressed between the pages. Mama, Mama, look what I found, the little girl hollered. Whatever in the world have you got there, her mother responded. With astonishment in the young girl's voice, she answered, I think I found Adam's underwear. May the Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen.